to Chopping with Chapman and strap yourselves in because today we're talking triples. So like many percussionists from Texas, I spent a lot of my formative years on these instruments in the marching band tradition. And one thing that I think that that activity taught me how to do really well is take an idea or a rudiment or a concept or anything like that and break it down into its component parts so that when I put everything back together, I feel a lot more secure and in control of what it is that I'm playing. So just as an example, you can take a very simple basic scalar exercise like green, and you can take each individual hand, play them individually. Right hand first, right? And then left hand only, which is all on the E's and the U's, making that a little bit trickier. Right? And then when you put them back together, each of your hands knows exactly where it's going to be at every single moment, and you have a really good solid foundation in where you're going to be across the, the keyboard. So you're probably wondering at this point, what does any of this have to do with triple laterals? Well, today's exercise is going to focus on taking the individual parts of a triple lateral, breaking them down just a little bit, and then when we put everything back together, we should feel a lot more secure and controlled in our triple laterals. So today's exercise is going to feature this permutation prominently, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then after a little bit, we'll play four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two. So the first step is to find any chord that's comfortable. In this case, I'm going to start with C and G in both hands. And we're just going to play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two, one. Basically four times on each permutation. So practice that a few times, get really comfortable with these motions, focusing on staying nice and loose in your double laterals, and rotating as much as possible on the single independent strokes. What I see a lot from students when they play these types of exercises is a lot of rotation in their double laterals, but then the single independence will be all R. So try to focus on keeping that in the rotation. with just that basic permutation, we're going to play this exercise in a format called 4-2-1. If you don't already know, 4-2-1 essentially just means that you take each pattern. In this case, our two patterns are 1-2-3 and 4-3-2. So we're going to take each one of those patterns, play it four times. Then once we're done with that cycle, we play each one two times. Then once we're done with that cycle, we'll play each one one time. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. But the fours you'll play one time, twos you'll play twice, and the ones you'll play four times in total. So each thing equals the same amount of time. Like so. Here are the fours. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. you'll notice that something happened when we got to the ones. It was no longer just one, two, three, and then four, three, two, those individual motions. Now when we combine them back and forth, we get three, four, three, three, four, three, two, one, two, two, one, two. We actually start to morph these into triple laterals. So by starting with these individual parts, these individual permutations, and putting them together, we slowly worked ourselves up to starting with that, those basic permutations can become really helpful. If we don't have a solid foundation in the motions used here, it's going to be very difficult to translate that into these relaxed single motion triple laterals. So spend some time playing through just that basic permutation of four, two, one around these permutations. super comfortable with just this basic permutation of one, two, three, four, three, two, and then putting them together to get our triples, you can start applying it to notes around the keyboard. So one thing I like to do is start with major arpeggios, big surprise, and I like to walk up on every single permutation by one inversion. So what I mean by that is you'll play one, two, three, move up to the next inversion, one, two, three, move up to the next inversion, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. When you start four, three, two, you start to walk back down the keyboard, right? That exercise would sound like this if we're applying it to the fours 
uh, by themselves. Right? Same thing can also apply to the twos, only we won't go as far up the keyboard. And then when we get to the ones, we essentially just stay in one place because it's switching back and forth. The entire exercise applied around the keyboard in 4C1 format is going to sound like this. Notice I'm trying to stay super loose as I'm making the transitions between the two different permutations so that when they become triple laterals in the ones, I still have that same fluidity. So. exercise if you start to apply it to different keys and you pull back the tempo just a little bit is it becomes an excellent push-pull workout so instead of setting up for each one of these chords individually with your planar shifts you can start to use pull motions and push motions to help you navigate these planar shifts just a little bit better so Gets you really used to that constant back and forth motion in your double laterals. So there will be more triple lateral videos in the future to come, but for right now, I think starting with that one, two, three, four, three, two motion back and forth is going to be really helpful to get you to have a lot of fluidity in your triples and almost as importantly, if not as important, a lot of control in your triples so that we don't go to play them and just just flaps back and forth. So that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, please feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to respond. So we'll see you again here next week with another Chopper with Chapman.